Hello everyone, this is the joy of reading. In today's video I would like to continue my Italian 20th century must read books series. So I will present other four Italian novels written in the 20th century. The first one is Zeno's Conscience, written by Italo Svevo and published in 1923. If you enjoy character studies and psychology, you will probably love this book. The book is an autobiography, a memoir of the protagonist Zeno. Zeno has been prompted to write this autobiography by his psychiatrist and he goes over his life starting from the youth, so the time when he started smoking, his father's death, his attempts to find a wife, his family dynamics, relationships with friends, the work and financial problems in his own company, until the beginning of the First World War, which is a problem for him because he lives at the border between Italy and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Zeno is aware that he has uh, psychological issues and that he has a very severe smoking addiction and he tries to think it over. So he believes to be mentally ill and he tries to change um, the sides of his personality that he thinks to be an expression of his mental illness. Whereas the other characters in the book, the healthy characters, are not very open to change because they think they're okay the way they are. I must admit that I had some prejudice concerning this book be before I read it because it is often a recommended reading for students of high school and even middle school and they tend to find it boring and for the excellent reason that it's not a book for 13 years old students. But I discovered some years ago that my prejudice was uncalled for because the book is wonderfully written and the style is very humorous in a way, so it can keep your attention even when the protagonist dwells about his smoking addiction for several pages straight. This book is in line with other books from the early 20th century especially books written in German like The Man Without Qualities by Robert Musil or Tonio Kolger by Thomas Mann. So books that focus on an apparently inept protagonist. This is, so to say, the Italian version of it. The second book is The Day of the All or Il Giorno della Civetta by Leonardo Sciascia, published in 1961. This is a mafia crime novel set in Sicily. In the book, Mr. Colas Berna, who is a businessman, is killed in the central square of his town. The police detective who is in charge of the investigation finds out that this businessman didn't want to pay the protection money to the mafia and he has likely been killed in order to set an example for other people who might want to do the same and not pay. Progressing farther with the investigation, uh, the police detective finds out that there are connections between the involved mafia boss and some important politicians in Rome. But then an eyewitness to the murder dies uh, the detective is mysteriously taken off the case and an innocent woman is arrested for the murder, which is then interpreted as a passion crime with no connection at all with mafia. And the detective travels back to northern Italy where he comes from, but he states that he's going back to Sicily sooner or later. And at the very end of the book he states, this is going to crack my head. When the book was first published in the 60s, the Italian government wasn't so keen on acknowledging that mafia was a problem. And especially there wasn't a literature about that. So the writer Shasha, who was a Sicilian, wanted to show this reality to the public, who was largely ignorant about that because there weren't 
books or newspapers or magazines or TV programs speaking about that. There is also a great movie inspired by this book and played by Claudia Cardinale, among others. I don't know whether there is an English version or not, however. The third book is The Partisan Johnny or Il Partigiano Johnny by Beppe Fenoglio, a book that was written in the 60s and first published in 1968, actually after its author's death. The book is set during the Second World War and particularly after September 43, when Italy made peace with the Allies. At this time, Italy was divided into two parts. Southern and Central Italy were occupied by the Allies and Northern Italy, also called the Italian Social Republic, was occupied by the Nazis and led by the fascists. That means that the Italian soldiers coming from Northern Italy, where the Nazis were still occupying, were supposed to keep fighting together with the Nazis, even if the legitimate Italian government had made peace with the Allies. So, some soldiers were okay with that, some other soldiers were not okay with that. The protagonist is a young army officer, nicknamed Johnny by his friends because he likes English literature. After the peace, he decides to go back to his family, which, however, lives in northern Italy. So, at first they hide him in a house of them in the countryside. But then Johnny decides to join the resistance, so the Italian partisans fighting against the fascists and the Nazis. So he joins the first group of partisans that he finds, which is a communist group. Even if he isn't a communist himself, he just wants to join the fight. And then he joins another group, an independent group made by former soldiers. And the rest of the book focuses on the partisans' efforts to control the region. Fenoglio, the author, had been a partisan himself, and the protagonist is probably in some ways a projection of the author himself. The story is not told in an epic way, so you see that the partisans are sometimes successful, also very successful, but sometimes they fail, and not all of them have real combat experience, so they sometimes make strategic blunders or are poorly organized and so on. So you don't see just the epic side, but rather the resistance is presented as something that one should do, although it becomes sometimes clumsy. In my personal opinion, this is the most important book about the Italian resistance. I mean, the most important fictional book. The fourth book is The Shape of Water by Andrea Camilleri, written in 1994. Actually, this one is not a must-read book, but Camilleri is a must-read author. He is probably the most important Italian author of the late 20th century, together with Umberto Eco, and certainly the most influential on Italian culture. I chose The Shape of Water because it's the first book of the so-called Montalbano series, a series of detective stories set in Sicily. The many books of the Montalbano series have inspired a beloved Italian TV series, and I think there are very few people in Italy who have never watched an episode of Inspector Montalbano. At the beginning of the book, a prominent engineer and politician is found dead, half-naked, in his car, in the rough part of his town. So it looks like he died during a sexual encounter, and a woman, the daughter-in-law of another politician, is suspected because her bag and some of her jewels are found in the vicinity of the body. But Inspector Montalbano, who is in charge of the investigation, thinks that something is off, and he eventually finds out that the victim wasn't with this woman when he died, but with another person, and somebody has arranged things to look like this for a reason. I think both the book and the TV series are very enjoyable, 
and they had great impact on the Italian culture. But the translation might take away some of the pleasure because Camilleri's novels are written partly in Italian and partly in his own Sicilian dialect. So these two languages, Italian and Sicilian, are mixed. So much that many Sicilian words Camilleri uses in his books are now widely understood in Italy even by people who come from other regions. So that's all for today. Thank you for listening. In my next video I will keep reading, translating and commenting the fourth canto of Dante's Inferno. By the way, another book where the translation takes away part of the pleasure. Have a nice day.